So in this video, we'll look at Taylor series. Now in the last three videos, in reverse order, I covered Taylor polynomials, then McLaren series, and McLaren polynomials. I'm going to go a little bit quickly through this material. I'll still explain everything, but if you need a deeper explanation, you can look back at those videos or something else, um, or comment with some questions if you have them. So first off, what is a Taylor series? Well, a Taylor series, um, p of x for a function f of x centered at x equals c. This is just the series such that the value of p evaluated at c is equal to the value of f, the first derivative of p at c is equal to the first derivative of f, the second derivative of p at c is equal to the second derivative of f at c, and for any nth derivative evaluated at c, the nth derivative of p will equal the nth derivative of f, and it goes on for all order derivatives of f. Now, how do we find this? Well, first off, the series will be this a naught plus a1 times x minus c plus a2 x minus c squared. The general term a n x minus c to the n, and it goes on infinitely. And because of the way that the derivatives of these of this polynomial or this power series works out, um, the nth coefficient, so a sub n will equal the nth derivative evaluated at c divided by n factorial. Now, why? Okay, so because as I take derivatives the first derivative of x is equal to 1. The second derivative of x squared is equal to 2, because we take the 2x and then get 2. The third derivative of x cubed is 6, because I take the 3, the 2, and the 1 out. 3 times 2 times 1 is 6. And in general, the nth derivative of x to the n is n factorial. So we divide these derivatives by n factorial because I won't get to that term until I take that derivative n times. So I need to sort of rectify this. You can either look at this or just go straight to the nth term and say the nth term will be the nth derivative of c over n factorial multiplied by x minus c to the nth power. Okay, some examples. Find the first three non-zero terms and the general term for the Taylor series of f of x equals sine of x centered at x equals 3 pi over 2. Now, usually if I have no better option, um, the third example there is a better option, but if I have no better option, I can just start by listing off some of these things and keep on going till I find a pattern. And this one, the pattern's not too bad. I'll go up to the fifth derivative. Sorry, that was the fourth here, and then I have the fifth derivative. Okay, so it goes sine, cosine, so the, the derivative of sine is cosine, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, the derivative of negative sine is negative cosine, the derivative of negative cosine is positive sine, and the derivative of sine, again, is cosine. So I have looped around, have a little bit more, I should be able to catch the pattern. I evaluate each of these at 3 pi over 2. So f of 3 pi over 2, f prime of 3 pi over 2, the second derivative at 3 pi over 2, the third derivative 
evaluated at 3 pi over 2. The fourth derivative evaluated at 3 pi over 2. And the fifth derivative evaluated at 3 pi over 2. Now, of course, all of these keep on going. Um, sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. Cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. Negative sine is positive 1. Negative cosine is 0. Sine is negative 1. Cosine is 0. And to get my coefficients, so a0, a1, a2, a3, a4, a5, and so forth and so on, I take my derivatives and divide by n factorial. So I have negative 1 over 0 factorial, 0 over 1 factorial, 1 over 2 factorial, 0 over 3 factorial, negative 1 over 4 factorial, and 0 over 5 factorial. And this continues. This 0 factorial is 1, so that's negative 1. 1 factorial is 1, so this is 0. 2 factorial is 2, so this is 1 half. 3 factorial is 6, so that's 0. 4 factorial is 24, so that's negative 1 24th. 5 factorial is 1 20, so that is 0. And I can see, so the first three non-zero terms and the general term for the series. So the series will be, the first non-zero term is negative 1. The second non-zero term is 1 half x minus 3 pi over 2 squared. I, the linear term is 0, so I don't include that. My third non-zero term is 1 24th, x minus 3 pi over 2 to the fourth, because that's the fourth term. So those are the first three non-zero terms. And then the general term, so we've got to find the pattern. And here's the pattern. It alternates, so I'm going to have a negative 1 to the... And it starts off at odd, so that's going to be negative 1 to the n plus 1. That way, the first term will be odd. And then I have, let's see, this is divided, I got the 1 here by dividing by 0 factorial. I got the 2 by dividing by 2 factorial. I got the 24 by dividing by 4 factorial, so I'm going to have divided by 2n factorial. And I multiply this all by x minus 3 pi over 2 to the even power. So that's 2n. And it continues. So just one more time through. The negative 1 to a power gives me alternating. I have n plus 1 instead of n because when n is 0, I want a negative number. So 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 1 to the first is negative 1. I'm dividing by the even factorials. This was over 0 factorial, 2 factorial, 4 factorial, 6 factorial. So I do 2n to get that. And I put it to the even powers. Um, x minus 3 pi over 2 to the 0, to the 2nd, to the 4th, to the 6th, so forth, so on. So that's the power series. Now, before we go on, let's look and see what it does for us. The blue curve is sine, and this is the, uh, the constants. Um, just has that first term, which was negative 1. As I add more terms, so this includes negative 1 plus 1 half x squared, you see I get a better approximation. This is only good really close, and then we get some, some points here that are close, but that's just um, sort of a coincidence. It's, it doesn't happen in general. But now, the curve looks really good over here, but then it curves away, so if I add on more terms, it gets better and better, and as I add on more and more and more terms, and I get towards the actual series, you can see that now I have a degree 20 polynomial that is exceptionally close to, to the sine curve over here around my center. So that's the first one. Example 2. Find the Taylor series centered at pi over 4. And some of these can be a little bit trickier. Okay, so this one's a little bit more general in how I can show it, but the pattern's going to be harder. 
I'll start off the same way because I don't have a better way to deal with this. So um, I'll skip along the notation a little bit to save myself some time in writing, but it's the same thing. So we need r of theta, and I'll go at least, let's say, five terms deep, so up to the fourth derivative, just to try to see the pattern and make sure that the pattern is what I think it is. Okay, so the original function is cosine theta. The derivative of that is negative sine theta. The derivative of that is negative cosine theta. The derivative of that is positive sine theta. And the derivative of that is positive cosine theta. So I've cycled all the way back. I'm evaluating each of these at not x, sorry, theta equals pi over 4. Cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Negative sine of pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2. Negative cosine is negative root 2 over 2. Positive sine is positive root 2 over 2. Positive cosine is positive root 2 over 2. Okay, so we see some type of pattern going on here. And this will get me a naught, a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, and all of this stuff does continue down. All of this should have ellipsis in it because it keeps going. We're doing the whole series. So I take these terms and divide by the factorial. So I have root 2 over 2 divided by 0 factorial. 0 factorial is 1, so I get root 2 over 2. This one, I have negative root 2 over 2 divided by 1 factorial. 1 factorial is 1, so I get negative root 2 over 2. This is negative root 2 over 2 divided by 2 factorial. 2 factorial is 2. Negative root 2 over 2 divided by 2 is negative root 2 over 4. This is root 2 over 2 divided by 3 factorial, 3 factorial is 6, so root 2 over 2 divided by 6 is root 2 over 12. And this is root 2 over 2 divided by 4 factorial. 4 factorial is 24, so root 2 over 2 divided by 24 is root 2 over 48, and this continues. So, okay, we're seeing some of a pattern, but it's hard to pick up on what's going on. So let's see if we can see what's happening here. Um, so this will be constant. This will have, let me do this, this will have not x, but theta minus pi over 4. This will have theta minus pi over 4 squared. This will have theta minus pi over 4 cubed. This will have theta minus pi over 4 to the fourth, and it's like, okay, so what's the pattern? What's the pattern? And here's how I see it. Since I'm not changing every single time, but every other time, this leads me to think that maybe I should pair these off, look at them two at a time. And I see root twos all the time. So I have a root two in each of these terms, okay? I also see x minus pi over fours. Now I don't see one here. I'm sorry, theta minus pi over fours, but it really is there. Um, the reason is this is to the zeroth power. So the first ones in each pair are even. So I put that to the two n power. The second terms in each pair are odd, so I'll put that to the 2n plus 1 power. Okay, a couple more things. Each of these originally did have a divided by 2, so I'll put this over and I'll have a 2 down there. But eventually I also divide by a factorial. The first term in each pair is divided by the even factorial, so this will have 2n factorial. The second term in each is divided by odds. And you see, I'm, I'm looking back in my work. Sometimes the final coefficient 
has too much going on to see the pattern. But if you look back and see what you did, you can see what's going on. So the second terms had the division by the odd factorials, which is 2n plus 1 factorial. Finally, I see it's alternating. And the first term starts as positive, then goes negative, then goes positive. So this will have negative 1 to the n, because I'm going to start at 0. Let me put that in here. So n goes from 0 to infinity. The f second term starts at negative, so I'm going to put that as negative 1 to the n plus 1 to make sure it starts at negative. And here is an example of this series. Much trickier to see the pattern. You can see where I got all the stuff, but it's a mess. Let's graphically look at, look at what just happened. So in here I'll change my function to cosine. And I will center it now at pi over 4. And here's what happens. So if you remember, it, when I was showing sine, I only got an extra term every other time. But when I'm doing this, and, and the reason was because I was at 3 pi over 2, which is 0 for a lot of things. For 3 pi over 2 is 0 for every time I have a cosine. And it's either 1 or negative 1 for all those things with sine. Um, but in this case, I added terms every time. And that's why it got messy. So when I add the next term, I keep on changing it throughout. And every odd term I add, let me think this through, every odd term I add came from sine. So that behaves sort of one way. And every even term I had came from cosine. And so that's why the pattern was much harder to see. But you can see, OK, it does the same basic thing. As I add more terms, I get closer and closer to the actual cosine graph. One more example, OK? And it looks like a mess, but it's actually pretty easy. So in here, I have a function where I know the value at 2. I know the nth derivative in terms of n. And I want to get the first four non-zero terms and the general term of <coughs> this series. So p of 2 is 0. And that's not one of my non-zero terms, unfortunately. P prime of 2, that's where n is 1, so I have 1 minus 1 factorial over 2 times 1 plus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 factorial is 1, and denominator is 3. The second derivative is going to be 2 minus 1 factorial over 2 times 2 plus 1. 2 minus 1 is 1, factorial is 1. Denominator is 5. The third derivative, evaluated at 2, is 3 minus 1 factorial over 2 times 3 plus 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. Factorial is 2. And 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7. And finally, finally because I only need the first four non-zero terms, the fourth derivative of 2, I put 4 in for all these n's, is going to be 4 minus 1 factorial over 2 times 4 plus 1. 4 minus 1 is 3, factorial is 6. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. And 6 over 9 is the same thing as 2 thirds. So these are going to, be, these are going to lead me to the first um, for non-zero terms. So I divide this by 1 factorial and get 1 third. Divide this by 2 factorial and get 1 tenth. Divide this by 3 factorial, 3 factorial is 6, and get 2 over 42, which is 1 over 21. And divide this by 4 factorial, 4 factorial is 24. 24 times 3 gives me 72, which leads me to 1 over 36. So now I can see, OK, p of x, capital P for the power series, is equal to, I have 1 third x minus 2 plus 1 tenth 
x minus 2 squared plus 121st x minus 2 cubed plus 136th x minus 2 to the fourth plus and now I need the general term and I'm looking at this and I'm like how the heck am I going to find the general term here? Same thing as before. Looking at the final coefficients it can be mind-boggling to try to see what's actually going on but look back and see what actually happened. So this was the nth derivative so I have n minus 1 factorial over 2n plus 1. And I need to divide this all by n factorial to get the coefficient. That's going to be the coefficient. And I'll work this out. So divided by n is the same as multiplying by 1 over n. So I have n minus 1 factorial over n factorial times 2n plus 1. I see that I have these two factorials and there's one additional term in the denominator so n minus 1 factorial divided by n factorial is 1 over n. Um, if you're not sure why just think if I have 5 factorial over 6 factorial that's 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 I'm just left with 1 sixth everything else cancelled. Okay so in here the general term now, well this was the coefficient, 1 over n times 2n plus 1, and I have x minus 2 to the nth power. And you can double check, so this is where n is equal to 1, 1 times 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3, this is where n is 2, 2 times 5 is 10, this is where n is 3, 3 times 7. So there is the general term. A little bit of a mess, but sometimes if you do sort of less work, you don't do all this stuff first, it'll be easier to sort of divine or figure out what this general term is. All right, comment below with any questions. I hope this helped you out.